first. So I'd like to call the July 13th um, police subcommittee meeting to order. Um, just for the record, I will provide who is in attendance. And I just want to start with um, number one. And number two is approval of the meeting minutes from 328 and 511. Did the committee have a chance to look them over? Yes. Okay. Any questions, concerns, comments? Do you have a motion to approve? Uh, anybody taping the meeting first? We can. And Paul Sadek for the committee. Okay. Motion of the meeting. I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm going to turn it over to. Compass. Yeah. Well, I. I want to call you by name, but I'll go with Compass. Go ahead. Okay. Hi. So we've been working on the program. We circulated some information earlier in the week. I don't know if you got to see it as a starting point. And Michael McEwen, who's on his way, is going to speak to that, which would be item two on the agenda. I'm going to speak about <coughs> site investigations that I've done, and then we can tie that back into the program when Michael speaks. So, what I, as we identified in the very beginning, uh, this site has its challenges with, with its slope and some wetlands, some uh, wells in the area, and, and whatnot. So, um, I believe it's important from the beginning to look conceptually at the site while we're developing the program, because the site, of course, is going to have an impact on the program. So, I brought with me three schemes. Uh, after studying the, the site, there's three major schemes that we could pursue for this given site and our given program. Uh, as you know, the site is a corner lot. It's at about 110 degrees for our site, and it opens up. It's right across the street from Memorial Park, which we're very proud of. So one goal from the very beginning is to have some sort of extension of Memorial Park out in the front of our new site. So as you can see here, I'm uh, creating a pedestrian link over across the street and in this void space in the setbacks in the corner is where we could have some green space, possibly our flagpole, and it would just be more of an extension of Memorial Park. It's, it's become very evident that there's certain traffic patterns that want to exist on this site, just mostly due to topography and the fact that it's a corner lot. The, the first thing that uh, comes to mind is that the site is steep over, over uh, parallel with Memorial Drive over here on the east side of Memorial and much flatter over towards Chase Road. So economically it's going to make a lot of sense to have some amount of parking in the front here where that plateau extends and over to the east side which would be conducive to uh, a, a, a flat parking area. So. Uh, the idea I'm pursuing, uh, one common theme in all these schemes, is the idea of connecting Memorial Drive and Chase Road uh, with the drive and then have some parking out in front here. That would be the visitor parking in, in all cases. This would be the public entrance or where you would encourage the public to enter. <coughs> this would be more of a police entrance where the police would enter. So um, in all the schemes, I've, I've carried that through. On the side, on this flat plateau, would be the area for staff and maybe some overflow and parking and heavier times. <coughs> then around towards what we'll call the rear of the building would be the cruiser area, along with more staff parking, with the staff entry in the back. So the public always entering in the front and staff and patrol entering in the back. So option number one uh, is pretty simple to comprehend. It's an option where uh, we construct a retaining wall and just make a one-story building. So that would, uh, a retaining wall um, about this size along here would yield um, a level site where you'd be able to build a one-story building. So that would, that's concept one that I developed. The retaining wall would be worst case scenario six to eight feet tall at the highest and then would taper to nothing as it went to the sides. That'd be, that'd be uh, option one, Go concept one. Concept two is a two-story building. Concept two takes advantage of the slope of the land, goes to two stories, uh, uses no retaining walls because the building 
basically retains the earth. And you'd have entry on both levels. So you'd enter, the uh, public would enter down on this lower level, and then there'd be a staff entrance on the upper level. So option two would be a two-story building, entry on both levels, no retaining walls. Traffic would circulate similar to concept one. In all schemes, we um, you um, showing a drive-through sally port. So you'd be able to drive through rather than have to back out. That's what you're seeing here in these schemes. Here you can see, uh, this isn't so much the building footprint as it is the maximum area that we'd ever have to use for uh, the size program we, we have. So you can see that the footprint gets smaller only because you'd be stacking two levels from one to two. Option three, or concept three, which I blew up, uh, because I think it's kind of interesting. It's, it's a combination of both. I call it the attic concept. So we had talked about a few times the fact of a basement and uh, the walkout concept. The problem we face here is that it, our site slopes up, not down. So where we face the public out here is lower than in the back. So rather than a walkout basement, we have more of a walk-in attic as the site slopes up. If we did a basement, it would just all go into the ground. And we certainly don't want to make the high side uh, the front of our building. So I, I did a conceptual section here, if you can see it. The dock area just being the land mass. Um, this would be Chase Road, where there's a public entrance. And the land slopes up just about right for a standard ceiling height where you could then enter into the back at the grate for whatever use you might have. That's this scheme here blown up. So this is about double the size, but again, here's Memorial and Chase. Here's Memorial Park and uh, the extension of that into our site. The public parking, police entry, public, public pedestrian entry. Here's a drive through Sally Port. Now, uh, I call this a one-story building with an attic. Uh, I could imagine developing this scheme where we put some of the uses uh, on the second floor, yet we don't, uh, it, it wouldn't be a complete two-story separation. It would be more like storage, mechanical. Things that you might put in the basement that we're talking about, only they'd be in an attic. Which I kind of like better because you can get more light, air, it's drier, uh, all that. So here uh, shows that scheme. And what would happen is you'd have your staff parking over here, cruiser parking around the back uh, with the option of uh, possibly a carport where you could cover the cruisers back here and walk in, but you could continue up to the second floor and walk in. The retaining walls would allow light, natural light, into almost all the building with just this one dot corner, where of course you would put program space that uh, wouldn't need natural light. And um, I can show you that. I did some program relationship diagrams based on these site concepts. So those are the three concepts that we can uh, speak about uh, uh, exploring. Uh, number one <coughs> would be a one-story building formed by retaining walls. Two is a two-story building taking advantage of the slope. Three is something in between. I call it the, uh, the attic walk-in scheme. Uh, I did do some space relationships that relate to these, but since Michael's here, maybe he could speak to the program and then that would make more sense when we came back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Before we move on to that, uh, normally when you're presented with three options like this, it's very difficult to make a decision. Uh, so you like to go through a pros and cons analysis, uh, and part of that would be cost uh, and operational. Uh, so you know, we'll have to do that, and we can do that as a committee to, uh, to discuss the obvious pros and cons, but uh, you know, it's not... Uh, it's not something that uh, I don't think we're expecting the committee to make a decision on this evening. It's just I, I appreciate you going through really looking at each, each option because it, we, we have to look at this site from, from all different directions. But, uh, so we will have to do a pros and cons analysis and, and discuss that uh, you know, with the committee and with the chief, of course. The attic scheme number three. <clears throat> <clears throat> Would there be internal access as well as the external access? Yes, certainly via a stair, and then depending on how much you put on the second floor, 
uh, would possibly kick in an elevator. And I, I know we've discussed this before, and I've seen this discussion echoed in another, uh, a number of other building projects, and it's the basement versus non-basement. And in a previous discussion, you alluded to the cost of a basement. <coughs> what, I was under the mistaken impression it was pretty cheap, but maybe you can enlighten us as to uh, some why it isn't uh, necessarily cheap. Right. So uh, with, with light frame construction, which is where we're headed with this building, um, if we did one story, we would basically do a frost wall and a concrete slab. Then from there, we'd build up and we'd have a, a ceiling structure and a roof structure. Once you put a basement in, you're still doing the slab, only now it's 8, 10, 11, 12 feet in the ground. Then you're building a structural floor uh, over that at that level. So now you have a structural slab plus the slab plus the tall walls, um, the tall concrete walls. Um, with the attic scheme, you're basically turning your ceiling structure into a floor structure, and you still have the roof. That's why an attic would be more economical than a basement. A quick question, though. In that scenario, though, you'd still need, for a police station, you're still going to need masonry structures for cell retention and that stuff. Correct. Um, especially if you're going to do an armory, you're going to need reinforced... Well, you won't need any reinforced floor if you put it on a slab, but will some of that offset that you're going to need to do, because everything else is light construction, you're talking metal framed wood skin, or are you talking, what are you talking when you say light construction? Well, it would be the light gauge metal or wood, or wood framing, and then in the areas of the cells or detention would be concrete block walls, would be the big difference. Would that offset be that much different versus a poured foundation? If that will still have a port foundation. The difference would be whether you had a frost wall with a slab on grade or a basement wall with a framed floor deck. Right. Both of them would have a port foundation. So if I could just add, Andy, in this scheme or this option or concept, almost all of the program spaces are all on one floor. So it's still a slab on grade. Mm -hmm. Just like it would be in, in the one story scheme, you yeah. said that you have the benefit of having the attic now for other All storage, potential mechanical, program, right? possibly IT, things like that in the attic. Okay. Well, on the two story building, does that have a slab, story one, and story two, yes. and then an attic also? It could have an attic, but yes, it, it could, but most likely that'd be slab, second story. And um, we probably try to keep a low roof line at that point because we're already <coughs> real tall out front there. Andy, um, when you say s two story, uh, would it be like a conventional two story, or are we talking a ground floor? Yeah, th and this scheme, you'd be this this scheme divides the program space up into two stories. This okay. this scheme and the scheme only. Okay, so you'd be That's building where the big a two story be. building on a slab. Basically. Yes, and then you'd have to decide what program spaces would go where, first or second. All right. So there you're splitting the program a little bit. Right. Okay. And your footprint, your footprint would get much smaller. Right. And it, and, uh, it wouldn't need retaining walls, because now you have two stories to bring natural light in. And this is like a good place to begin, because you're, you're st we're studying the three potential, really, one of the only three potential options to think about. It's like a one-story, two-story, or it's a, a hybrid of sorts. You know? So your, your attic thing is basically inverting yes. the, the building concept from a base. What you would put in the basement, you're basically going to put in an attic. Yeah, if the, slice, if the site sloped the other way, we do a walkout basement. What's your, what's, your, uh, what's your favorite option? I like this option. So I think you can get real creative with this by the time we're done and what you could put up there. I think it could really save some cost. Right, from a cost, cost analysis. <laughs> for grates and, and all this thing. Are you talking like roughly the same amount of usable square feet on each one of these, or does one allow for more space, well, us, usable space? Well, what I think is that I think this one here, if you did have a usable attic space, would be larger. You'd get some space. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you'd get more space for your buck. Yeah, you're maximizing that first floor space by moving, you know, auxiliary things, things that could to be the separated. Yes. Yeah. So the usable 
uh, square feet would be greater in this one, you're saying? The yes. Potential. So it's, yeah. It's potential it's more, for that. more uh, likely of expansion. We're just right. starting our program, yeah. so we're going to decide just ultimately where we want to end up. We haven't even scratched the surface on that yet. But um, some of our program space could possibly go in this attic, maybe reducing the first floor. So Andy, what's your pretty more flexible? Yeah, but yeah, utilizing some is utilizing less land, so you're get, leaving more land for parking on some yes, of them. Yes, ultimately. But you're also creating a, the potential for expansion without having to build, right. which is interesting. Go ahead, Mike. I just want to say that number two, <clears throat> we haven't discussed this, but number two will almost certainly require an elevator right. and two yes. stairs. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's going to be more expensive. Right. And affects the operations. So. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, and it seems there's a little confusion between that. I think I heard someone ask about an attic in that one. If there's an attic in that story, in that, it's a three-story, really. Two usable stories and attic for expansion. Probably not very useful, whereas the option three, now you can actually, if you put those retaining walls in there, you can actually access on grave, which means... Theoretically, you could, perhaps, the staff could park there, go in, do the locker room stuff, and then go downstairs. You'd only need a single stair mm -hmm. because you're, you're accessible at both sides. No public really would go between the floors. If, if your land did not slope up like it did, I would not even pursue a two-story scheme for this particular project. But it does, so I, I thought it was worth looking at. If you flipped your access, so your entrance points were still off of both roads, but it would be in the opposite, what Joe's showing is the rear. Um, so the, the general public would enter at the first level, I'm saying on option two, the, it would now become the second level, the, 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 the basement level would become, could become staff level, sally port level, that kind of stuff. You could, but because of the slope and the way you traverse the site, it might be kind of awkward with the face you present. To the public. The face we'd be presenting would be into the interior of the lot. Right. The exterior would be, have to have foliage at the street level to block the, exactly. the rear of the building. I see that. Right. Do you want to add to the conversation? Oh, I want to talk about program. Yeah, absolutely. Which is all. Take one of this and pass it down. Do you want me to hand out, you know what, I'll hand out the actual program that we're basing it with on as well, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. I think I have enough. Andy, yeah. when you put this lab, you're going to put your mechanics, so you know, you're going to put this lab? Or are you going to put it? You do everything in both? Yeah. Just put it like a thermal barrier between the slab and the Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you add these all up and divide them, um, it's 2.5. So you're right on the average in terms of size. Lake goes a little bit below the average, and so on and so forth. So the, the size of the station and this program is the, represents the program that you have in front of you, which has the large meeting room. Oh, you know, I consider it oversized because compared to any other ones here, it's much bigger. Uh, and that gives you square feet per officer of 754. That's above the average. The average is in the low sixes, 640, 650, somewhere in there. But there are reasons, and I think it's important to, for you to see the reasons for some of these being either lower or higher. Uh, many of these have an outbuilding. You can see in the last, the second last line there, I checked off the ones that have an outbuilding. I really don't know if there's one in Westwood or not. Um, and that's program space. What I mean is it's a building that uh, for one reason or another, in order to save construction cost, those elements were put in a separate building. Um, usually a garage type of building, not as much um, heat, uh, you know, air conditioning. There's no air conditioning, I'm sorry. It's just a space heaters kind of thing. Uh, you have the opportunity here in number three to do that upstairs rather than have an outbuilding, which may be, may save some site costs because you've got to get to that outbuilding. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, Middleborough, it has a low ratio, but it, the reason is had a larger project and that failed. And I, I think the reason it failed really wasn't because of the size of the project, but because they were restoring a historic building in town as part of that project and that was not a popular uh, thing to do. Um, Bellingham went under a large program reduction uh, before it actually went out to a vote, so that reduced their average a little bit. You can see a Cushnet and, and Sandwich both had projects that failed at, uh, by the voters and were reduced. Uh, Wellfleet, it's a renovation uh, project. They're actually taking over the entire building. Half of the building was uh, a part of the fire department before. Um, uh, Menden is taking over an old fire station and adding on to it. Uh, so as you can see, they're not all, you know, you're not really comparing apples to apples here, but you get a general idea of it. You know, Watertown obviously is a large urban, it's an urban one, so they, they, they have lower ratios. Uh, and there are a couple here that have large summer populations which may affect it may be the reason why there's more square footage per officer because they have, you know, some of those uh, part-time officers come in on the summer. So this gives you an idea of where you sit, which is above the average, um, but certainly not out of the range. Um, one of the things that we discussed, and I think it's worth looking at, was if you just you recognize that you're building a larger meeting room for perhaps other uses, if you didn't do that and had just a uh, a meeting room for 30 people, which is you know would be normal for a police station this size, it changes things quite a bit. And I have another analysis that shows that without going through the program, basically we're talking about downsizing the meeting room only uh, and the related spaces, those being coat closets, kitchenette, uh, furniture, storage, those sorts of things. Well, what that does, uh, and, it, and what it affects obviously, is the size of the station and the square foot per officer. Yes. Uh, that actually brings us down to very close to the average of all of these, which is you know, the mid-sixes. And I, I, again, I did this just so you can see how much that larger meeting room affects the, uh, not just the overall size, but we're comparing it with others. So that's the, uh, that's the analysis that I had. I'll, I can certainly answer any questions about it. Um, but 
I also need to tell you that I think that the, the uh, program that we've developed represents something that will meet the needs of the department and uh, uh, takes into account a very small amount of growth, but some growth. Uh, so, um, in my opinion, the program, whether or not you have the large meeting room, the rest of the program, the operational part, uh, is where it should be. And that's the handout that I sent around. Of. It's also what was sent by email, so you have that. So you can see the details, the makeup of the actual program. Yeah, but that's the... Uh, that's that's the big one. 1.3, right? yes. Yeah, yeah, we did I not sh send out this one. Oh, you sent that? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, that was the one that was part of the package that went out to everyone. Okay, but I did bring the other one. The other one, okay. And I'll pass that out. I know it's going to be a little confusing, but it does say 1.4 on it. Version 1.4, yeah. Uh, and it says smaller training meeting room. So you can... But basically, that's all it deals with, that and the ancillary spaces. Um. And just to back up for a little bit, uh, when we started this process, we actually held our first, um, first programming meeting with the chief the day before the last building committee meeting, and, um, and that began the dialogue of just uh, starting with the questionnaire and getting some information and, and, and the back and forth. And then since then, there's been two other... Uh, programming sessions uh, with the chief, and then we, there's also been internal meetings and conversations between us and Castle Blues just to you know, continue to, to develop and evolve. So it's been a process, and it's been a process of feedback, it's been a process of uh, just you know, understanding the spaces and then getting into some of the adjacencies, and that's where all of this is beginning to develop. I just realized I should have explained one other thing. You see the bowl on the right where it says no PSAP. That means there's no communication in that building. PSAP is a public safety answering point. It's a legal term. So there are two stations here, including Mansfield, which is Mansfield is using their current station to build a regional uh, communication center. So they have no radio rooms, no dispatch. They're, that's not in the building at all. That does affect, obviously, the square feet per. And Michael, just another point of clarification I'd, I'd like to know. So when it says larger project failed, that's not what we're seeing here. So like middle. No, you're looking at what was eventually this built. This is what or they is eventually is being built. built okay. All right. Yeah. So this is what's actually what they so settled. So there was a larger one. What they settled with. Yeah, yeah, larger than the twenty thousand, and it failed, and then it came back with something else. Okay. Yeah, it's closer. To Did you say that the average training room is? We're talking about the, the seating capacity for training and meetings. Is 30 on most of the stations? It's enough to meet the, you know, get the, the uh, staff together. So uh, that, for, for this size, we're talking 30. Uh, for a, a larger one, it would be larger. But I have to tell you that, uh, you know, we're talking about 70 was in the original program. The only time we've done that one that large was Nantucket. Nantucket trains 60 officers every spring or summer. Uh, and then, of course, immediately the selectmen took it over as their meeting room. Right. <laughs> so I, I think it wasn't in the rational for Well, there, well there, are several, there are several um, factors that went into the 70. First of all, it was because Mark does a training and needs the space. Um, we went into a cushion it and it was rather small and we felt like it, it was too small. The second is, is that, as you can see, this is where we meet. So when we have selectmen meetings, um, where, and they're attended because there might be a hot button item to talk about, there's no seating. Um, third, uh, you know, Lakeville has the high school that has a meeting room, it has the intermediate school, which has um, a library that they can sit at and meet at. So they have several, and you know that, Dan, they have several places where, you know, they could meet. We don't have anything. So that was one of the reasons why we wanted to build that is because we don't have a meeting place in Freetown. That would, that would be conducive to our meeting place. The, the other thing was we don't have an emergency operations center. It, uh, the uh, the SEMP, the Community Emergency Management mm -hmm. Plan, has it in our interrogation room. We don't do that. We use the kitchen over at the fire station. Well, <laughs> so 
in part, this was envisioned as uh, a community room where the selectmen and other uh, boards could have meetings, but also in the event of a, you know, a disaster or, or some other serious event, we could we could have some room to operate our EOC. Um, I think they mentioned a kitchenette. That would be a small kitchenette to support the EOC if things went over 24 hours, et cetera. Uh, power was out, you know, you'd have generators to support people actually um, staying there during the duration of a, a major event. So I think, I think those were the two major factors uh, that went into this EOC and the community. And the training. And the training, and the training. Too, yes. So those are the three yeah, factors. I mean, we did go out there when we said 70, like, um, you know, but I think 30 would still be too small. That's my opinion. We, we, no, it'd, be a sh we'd, it'd be a shame if we g gave up the 70 at this point in time. It's, it's right. benefiting the whole town. I agree, but you the other town. part of this is, is that it has to be a sellable project. And if we don't have a sellable project, then the taxpayers are going to say no right away. So it has to be palatable, palatable to the to everyone. So, you know, well, I, I like seventy. Believe me, I would love to stay to seventy. But if so seventy comes in with a price tag that's way too much for us, and we might as well we're shooting ourselves in the foot at the same time. You may recall that uh, Andy pointed out last time that depending on how this is designed, you might have an ad alternate for the bid that extended the room mm -hmm. to capture, uh, you know additional space. I, that's mm -hmm. fairly easy to do. I don't want to speak for yeah. you guys, but... Uh, if you don't well, set up the tables, how much that, does, does that give you? Uh, extra chairs. Well, well let's, let's, let's say you that, had 30... What I saw you style instead of tables. The thing that I'm talking about is for, uh, for 30, the space is for five, a dais of five, and 25 people sitting at, you know, that's the ones that are a foot and a half wide, just a writing down. So if you took that out and put just chairs in there, you're really talking about 50. So if, you, if your setup generally was no desks, you might, instead of 30 people with desks, you might have room for 50. Yeah. And then we can you know, show you that on a uh, room data sheet. You know what I mean? So maybe we can show you 70, what the two options 50, would be. 50, 50, 50, yeah. yeah. The other idea of 50, and we could yeah, seat for 70 yeah. if we wanted to change arrangements yeah, on seat more. Right. That would be better, yeah. Yeah. But I think my, 50 would probably be our minimum. Yeah, it should be. I my agree. complaint with, when we talked about this the last time was the cushion is set up for 40. And if you're going to do a multi feature like that, um, when you have to move the furniture, you cut down on the space to actually work. If we planned on 50, that would probably be the idea of what I suggested before uh, for us to do all things with. And I think where in a we can do they that. move the furniture. We move them anywhere we can. We move them okay, around so the hallway. We stack them up so in the back of the room. If we had in the design a place to put furniture yeah. out of the way, would that they have one like storage it? closet that's <coughs> supposedly designed for that that's on the other side of the little kitchenette? But it, it isn't large enough for them to do that with the tables and furniture they bought. So basically what we did is we just stacked everything against the far wall mm -hmm. and, and did it that way. Okay. So it sounds like planning for 50 would be the appropriate move at this time. Yes. Everything. Yes. Do you want to walk through the process and the program? There's a lot of information that was sent to you, but I, if you... If you digest it and look at each space, it hasn't been put together as a floor plan yet, but the, the, the process is a space needs assessment, and then the team puts together a room plan for each space, uh, just so you can understand what's in each space. Uh, a lot of times, if people <coughs> are questioning, why do we have so much square footage plan for this facility? Uh, it's good to walk through those spaces so you can understand it. And then there's a fact that it's added to that for corridors and wall thicknesses and uh, elevators or stairs if you have a two-story building. I don't know what the committee, what their, uh, what their, if they have any questions on what was distributed, if you'd like to go through it and ask questions of the designers, that, that would be great. Or I would think so. 
I, I would just add that during this process, the offices met and we talked about um, what we do in terms of whether it's cleaning guns or storing weapons, storing ammunition, writing reports, and from all of that information, it was distilled down into a, a, a program that they put together. So what you're going to see is basically what the officers put forth in terms of what the department needs or the, the top department uh, uh, identifies as necessary elements. Now, the current operation, for example, our uh, officer's room serves multiple elements right, in a very small space. A, it's dangerous. B, it's not practical. Uh, we, we eat there. We process evidence there. We process drugs there. We clean our guns there, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that was a number of elements. That's been broken out, and uh, you, you're going to see, see that as these gentlemen move through it. So we want to run through this document, the documents that went out? Well, I, I, I would think go through the, uh, the, the program document. I don't know if you want to go through all of that or just to I think show that, that and then are. If, maybe if we touched on the room data sheets and you know, did a couple of rooms. I think that's helpful to kind of see what makes up the space. Yeah, because I think those are very helpful. All right, well, uh, let me just uh, spend a couple minutes going through this document and um, just to show you how it's set up. Uh, Is that the 1.4 document, Mike? Right? Uh, 1.3, 1.3. 1.3, the one that they, they received. Because the only difference really is in this first part, which is called the public area. So essentially, uh, the public area is where the public can go. Uh, they can't go beyond this unless they're escorted. It's a question of security of, of um, um, access control. So uh, what's in that public area? A vestibule, lobby, obviously, some public toilets, a, a safe room or an interview room where if someone comes in at 3 in the morning and needs to be maybe getting away from some, somebody, uh, and uh, an office is going to be called and deal with them. They need to be able to go into the room and lock the door. But not on the secure side, it has to be accessible on the public side. Uh, the training room, uh, EOC, community meeting room that we talked about, and the ancillary spaces, coat closet, kitchenette, the EOC storage, because there are some things that you'll take out when you're using that as an uh, emergency operations center. And of course, adequate table and chair storage, so you can clear that space totally mm -hmm. uh, and use it for well other uses. It becomes very flexible. All right. Now, after that, we have the communicate emergency communication center, uh, which uh, you know has a main desk. It's uh, adjacent to the lobby, a little lost and found storage area, um, and self-contained within the dispatch communication dispatch area, uh, which is the first space there, are two people with a, uh, a uh, just a, a desk kind of backup of two stations, uh, are the uh, lockers, a, a unisex toilet, and a break room so that they don't have to leave that space uh, when they're on duty. Um, you don't want to miss a call if you're going down the hall, and often we actually put a, uh, a handset in the toilet, um, so if something comes in, they can actually deal with it while they're, while they're there. But they're <laughs> in a room. This is a uh, again a separate space within the building, and it's protected with a two-hour fire rate per requirements of NFPA. Uh, so. Uh, the next uh, page, two, we, we have the uh, command and administration area, which kind of speaks for itself. But the, the administrative assistant, who actually wears three hats in this uh, in this station, she has to her, her adjacency uh, to uh, again that public counter because she deals with records, uh, the dispatchers because she's their supervisor. It's very important how that works into the design. Uh, and, and she also directs traffic uh, uh, to some extent for people who are in the uh, command area. So it's, it's kind of a key location. 
So we have that uh, little uh, uh, waiting area, workroom file, and the chief's office. There is, we like to put in uh, a toilet slash shower in that area, again, uh, for the use of all of uh, people in the command area. Uh, often, if there's any kind of emergency or, or extended um, duty, uh, they, they have to stay there long periods of time. So it's convenient to have it there and not have to leave that area. Uh, and the conference room, I'm sorry, we have an administrative lieutenant's office, another uh, office which is actually something that could be used for future uh, growth because that's one of the places where all departments tend to grow. The more services they have for the community, there might, it might be a community policing office, it might be a lot of things that they're dealing with public. Um, and then we have uh, the conference room and a little coffee area and supplies, which by the way, if you've been through the department, you see that supplies are everywhere. <laughs> Every every place they can put a box or, or a container of some sort, it, it's there. Okay, so uh, records area has a work area, which uh, in this case we're, you know, we're saying it should be um, cheek by jowl with the with the um, uh, public counter and the the, um, the um, dispatch area because that's the person who does all of that and some uh, uh, archive record archives and we're talking about uh, high density but not the big rolling things the things these are just uh, uh, units um, contain units that are three feet by I think 30 inches and you can get twice as much in them. You know, they flip. So you can get to a lot of records very quickly. You don't need a lot of space for it. It's a very efficient space. Uh, next we have the patrol facilities, uh, which has um, a, a, a private uh, office for training and accreditation uh, and, and its files. There's some need for uh, privacy there. A shared patrol sergeant's uh, office where there, where there are five people together in sort of a, a bullpen, if you will. The roll call room, which is the squad room, which is the room which uh, is now used for so many different things in the existing facility. I'm very surprised that there has not been some kind of a, an accident over time. I mean, they're, they're cleaning guns. There's fluid in that room. I think every time I've been there, at least one or two people have knocked on the door to see if they can go in to do whatever it's they were going to do. Uh, is a lack of security because things get left out. Uh, it's just a, it's not a very efficient space. It, it's a very poor work, working conditions, and uh, it means every time you're going to do something, you've got to pick up what the other person left there so you can put your stuff down. You just, it's just a waste of time and a lack of security, and in my opinion, liability. It's a very big liability issue. We mix these things. They're eating food next to chemicals where they clean guns. Uh, Usually on top of them. Next to fat, next to <laughs> fat and all and heroin. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah. the rising. Not by chance, but yeah, exactly. For <laughs> <So> multi-purpose. <laughs> yeah. and, and what is the chance that someone has already had a, a sandwich with, with fentanyl? In? Probably not fentanyl. <laughs> Yeah, no, we, we, we know. We know we probably would have not had the Narcan them, but... Okay, uh, so and then we have uh, patrol storage. Uh, right now, the defibrillators, I think that we, they're on a wall. They need a storage area and a report preparation area. There is nothing like this. So anyone, no one can concentrate on what they're doing if they're doing a report. They're bothered by people coming into the room by... So we need a place where someone can sit down and efficiently com complete a report. Uh, without uh, distracting, something is done a lot at the beginning and, and or end of the shift, or if there's a large, well, let's say, arrest or something where you come into the office and you put your reports together in a, quiet space. in a calm space. It's uh, how this is designed is important because you also you want it to be private, but you don't want it to be a place where people hang out. Uh, so there's some transparency, some visual observation you want to take place, uh, you know, could be adjacent to the sergeant's room with a glass, uh, glass in the wall, that sort of thing. So, private for the work, 
but not, uh, you know, not a back alley. Uh, and then separate, an armory for, uh, that has a station for the armorer. You happen to have to be lucky enough to have one, so you do uh, prepare guns. Not, not many departments actually have someone that can do that. Uh, so you would have a workstation and the storage in one area, and then a cleaning station where regular uh, patrol officers uh, can go and clean their guns in a safe, uh, uh, ventilated uh, area. Uh, they're often accessed one after the other, but they can be separate, one next to the other also. Uh, the investigative division uh, has a shared detective's office for three people. Another, uh, again, this is sort of a bullpen. They need a little bit more space uh, for a couple of reasons. One, they, can, they often may have to sit someone down and take information from them, but also uh, we, we have a monitoring station in there uh, that anyone, not one of the, uh, anyone besides one of the detectives can actually look at a monitor of an interview going on uh, in the interview room. Uh, and very often, uh, you know, there's a, a little round table, work table, where two or three can get together and do some, you know, work. Very often, if there's any kind of a task force going on, you know, that kind of space is necessary. Um, we have a secure file. Instead of files being open in the squad room, they're you know, secured uh, in a room in, for investigative division. There's also a interrogation room, a real interrogation room. Um, uh, and we, we talked about having a second one. So often you may have two suspects and you want to compare one story to the other. It's convenient if you can have a second room. We thought that this may be also something that could be shared, that second room, with patrol uh, when they have need to speak privately with an individual or, or conduct some kind of a, a, a discussion. They could use that second room because it won't be used all the time. Um, and, of course, their equipment storage. Uh, staff support. We're really talking about the locker rooms and toilets here, uh, plus a break room. Um, and we also had a room here for the auxiliary uh, officers. And I say miscellaneous staff toilets. This, depending on the design, you probably will need uh, a couple of toilets in the building for the staff. Uh, but. Depending on the layout, if we're very convenient to the locker room and the patrol officer can go in there, uh, that may work. But the, very often detectives don't use that, so we would probably at least have to have one unisex toilet, maybe two. We're carrying two for now because we don't have a design. Uh, Sally Port vehicles. If I, if I may? Yes. Uh, so in both locker rooms, you're planning for some expansion as well, which is one of those key areas. Everybody's noticed that. Well, yes, what plans. I'm saying is how many would be installed. If you look at the occupants, the layout is designed for, in, in the case of the male, 30 lockers, but you only need 26 right now. Right. And the female is designed for eight, but, you know, we're suggesting putting four in right now. Mm -hmm. And then as you need the others, you just buy them and put them in. They're off-the-shelf items. Um, Sally Port vehicles. This is a you know garage area, if you will. Um, it has to be big enough for um, a uh, to bring an ambulance in and close it off, make it a secure space when you're either taking a, uh, someone out of the ambulance, bringing them into the station, or the opposite, sending someone to the hospital. It has to be done in a secure space, uh, and that requires a space about 36 feet long because uh, the um, ambulances are 24 feet, standard ambulance is 24 feet long. You need to be able to pull a gurney out the back and walk around the front. So 36 works. It also is handy in storms. You can put two uh, uh, patrol cars, patrol vehicles in there to get them out of the snow if it's a heavy snowstorm. Um, and then we have an impound vehicle, so you can bring uh, a vehicle in that needs to be processed. Uh, and 
obviously that necessarily doesn't have to happen <coughs> in one day. Uh, you're not worried about the, the rain. You can take a few days to get it fully processed and then you can, it can be taken out and put in an impound yard outside. Um, this will protect the evidence better. Uh, and actually we're told that this leads to more, fewer cases being thrown out because of uh, inadequate uh, processing of the evidence. Uh, there's an emergency eye wash shower. If someone got maced or, uh, or something like that, they just, you know, they can clean up before they go into the prisoner processing area. We usually have some vehicle supply storage, lights, tires, things that uh, you know, are very light to the kind of maintenance that might happen. Uh, in there as a miscellaneous storage. Okay, from there you would go directly into the prisoner processing. There is a, uh, so we have the area, but there's also a temporary holding, so you can actually uh, just open up a door in the sally port, shove the uh, a prisoner in there, and close it, and then go about, the officer can then get his other stuff, get arranged, and then go in another door. He doesn't have to worry about that prisoner. That prisoner is already secure and he didn't have to walk through a room to do that where he might find things in there that he didn't expect to find there. He just puts them in this holding closet or holding area. Um, might be better actually to do a little bit of a tour at some point so you can see how these spaces actually work. Um, so then there's a, a you need a room for the intoxilizer. You have to do a test, uh, two tests, 20 minutes apart. Prisoner has to sit down between them, or generally he's allowed to sit down between them. Um, we usually have a shower, a decon we call it. So if this if this is let's say an inebriated guest who has messed themselves up, you can put them in there and hose them down before you dirty up a cell. You gotta hose up that. Yeah, well, then you're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to take them out of a secure area to do that. That's what you got to do. Very, fairly simple space, but, but it keeps the area cleaner. Um, a prisoner property lockers, uh, there we, uh, uh, we usually put them within the, we want the prisoner to be able to see his uh, personal effects being put into a locker, so it's, uh, you know, where you locate that is important. You should be able to see it from in the holding area uh, or in the processing area. Um, and um, there's a custodial room in there for mopping up and also keeping any kind of, if there's any bed clothes or anything like that, storing it in that area. So you keep all that stuff in this. Uh, again, it was referred to before as it's all built out of block kind of epoxy, and theoretically you can hose anything down in there. So you want it secure and clean, and as healthy as you can keep it, because they can get pretty messy. Um, and there's also hard interview room in there. In other words, if you bring someone in and you've got an interview room right away, this is, uh, and when I say hard interview room, this is for an unruly person, there's a little uh, stainless steel table bolted to the wall, a couple of stools, stainless steel, bolted to the floor. So no picking up things and throwing them around. This is where, you know, a, a, a person who's still in the shock of being detained, you can uh, interview them safely. And again, it's the same block, epoxy walled area. Yeah, we saw that on a couple of our tours, uh, and you're not bringing a, a person out of the secure area into the the general right. areas of the building. It's, it's all hard surfaces, easily washable, and it's secure. There's no way through the door that keeps the detention area from the rest of the police area uh, without uh, some kind of access control. So there's no way to escape. Uh, detention area, we've talked about uh, one handicap cell and two basic cells, but separating them sight and sound so you can really use them, mix them up anyway <coughs> if you want. And a, uh, a, a, a status offender area is not in the ten detention area, usually it's somewhere else in, in the softer part of the uh, station. Uh, you can't lock them in, it has to be a door 
that can, can be opened. Um, very often we'll put a lot of glass in there so anyone walking around can see them, the person in there, uh, and essentially you know, watch what they're doing. Okay, so uh, evidence. Uh, evidence, obviously, uh, this is uh, a similar experience to the prisoner, uh, where you're bringing in evidence. Uh, we're talking about a drop-off alcohol where the prisoner, I'm sorry, the, the officer will take the evidence, put it, there will be bags uh, to put things in, they put it in there, label it, and put it in a pass-through. In other words, the officer that has the um, evidence opens it like a locker door, puts it in there, closes it, and it automatically locks, no one can touch it, except for the evidence officer, and he has to go on the other side of the wall, uh, and he can't get through that door without access control, so you can, uh, theoretically, you know who went in, when they went in, how long they were there, all of that is controlled by a computer system. So, uh, on that other side, the uh, evidence officer will take it out, process it, do whatever they have to do, don't do a lot in-house, but need the ability to be able to dust for prints or some minor things, at least have that capability in that space. And then from there, it goes into the storage area. We're talking about a high-density storage area. And here, we're talking about those rolling, those big rolling uh, uh, files. Uh, you put tracks on the floor, and you can store three times what you can store in a normal fire room with these things. So very efficient, and it's definitely worth uh, the expense of putting those in because Otherwise, you're building something three times as large. And with requirements for keeping evidence now in murder cases, you keep it forever. So um, that's an unknown factor right now. People, are, you know, departments aren't really sure how much they're going to have, you know, how, how that's going to work out in the future. But um, you need to be able to, to store a lot of material um, for long periods of time. So there'll be probably an active area and a more passive area. You can also, uh, in these high-density um, configurations, you can have uh, some of these uh, rolling uh, files are configured to put long guns in and pistols. So uh, if you have um, uh, restraining orders and you have to take the guns of someone, and for some reason those people tend to have a lot of guns. Uh, so you. Here's a place you can store them <laughs> in, in a secure, uh, a secure area. Uh, you, but you do need uh, a, a drug, or, well, I say drug room, where actually what we've talked about is having a vented cabinet, something that's a metal cabinet, lock sealed, and has a vent to the outside. Otherwise, that smell can be annoying. <laughs> uh, and a refrigerator, we need a refrigerator in there for a biological evidence. And by the way, the pass-through has a section with refrigerator in it, so if it's a rape kit or something like that, you put it in there, even if, <coughs> even if it's like on a Friday and the office is not going to get it to, to Monday, it's in a refrigerated area, so it's fine. Um, information, technology, and support. Uh, we talked a little bit about this, but this is really the growth industry in police and public safety. There's so much technology, it's continually changing. Uh, the, the need for storage uh, of data has increased. The need for it to be in a conditioned space where you're not going to lose data uh, because uh, one of the machines fried. Uh, so we, 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 it has to be adequately sized, it needs redundant cooling system fails, another takes over. Um, and it has to be flexible, it has to built, be built flexibly enough so you can change things and adapt new technologies. We usually uh, are recommending a um, raised floor in that uh, and the dispatch area so that you're really walking on, you know, eight inches or a foot or so of, of air. Uh, where you can make, you can change the cabling. There's a lot of flexibility. You, you have the ground, grounding of both the communications equipment and uh, the uh, antenna and all that, uh, very easily accessible. It really just makes it easy to keep up uh, with the changing technology and keep your technology, your equipment, functioning. So 
it's it's a it's a very important space. You also need a space where a programmer, which sometimes is an IT person, sometimes is a police officer who who does that, uh, can program new computers uh, over to light repair. Uh, those kinds of things that uh, need to get done. We very often put that right next to the, the room that uh, where all the big equipment is. Uh, IDF closet, uh, we really only will need that if we do the two-story solution, so that may wind up going away. Uh, you can you can go up, it used to be 300 feet, I think it's a little less than that now that they recommend you to, but um, we probably won't need one in a, a building this size. And then we're into the really the, the, uh, the storage, facility maintenance, building services, these are sort of generated, some of them are generated by the information we got from the department, some is uh, like the mechanical spaces are generated from formulas that, uh, that uh, have been used in the past by or have been developed by our mechanical engineers uh, as guidelines for, you know, up front to get as close as you can. So what that brings to you is a net program area of 11,685 and a net to gross air, uh, adjustment, which uh, is generally um, 0.4. We like to carry at this point. Our ideal is to try and get that down to closer to 0.35 through design. And I can tell you that your current facility, even though it's really height is actually a 0.45, so it's less efficient in terms of program space and you know, wall area and circulation than what we're proposing here. That's not so taking into account, <laughs> not taking into account the fact that we're using different rooms for several uses, but what I mean is we're not going to, we're trying to be more efficient. Uh, we're trying to design it so we don't need quite that much circulation. You know, not build walls bigger than needed, that's okay. So, that brings you to a total of 16385 uh, and an auxiliary uh, building, which is part of the program for things that won't fit in there or you don't want in there. Um, traffic trailer, ATM, ATM, is that the right? No, TV. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to put You, you pointed it out to me before. <laughs> Great all the transactions. We've got to pay for the same phone. The, the chief pointed out to me before, and I, and I neglected to correct that. It's ATV. Uh, and some miscellaneous storage. Poker machines. That was... Uh, to have those. We still have those, don't we? <laughs> uh, uh, the highway, the I think they're finally gone. Yeah, they are so, gone. so that would be, uh, we're saying here, in an, an, uh, an outbuilding, which essentially is a 20 by 20 garage, but it could be in an attic, because what, some of these things probably go down at the ground level and be replaced by other things uh, in an attic. So you might be able to avoid that building, depending on how you design the actual building. I'm putting an ATV up there. No, but you we no, but uh, you can it can go into a slot next to the uh, drive-through um, bay. You add a little there, and you put something else upstairs. It you know comes down to how you put it together. So what come what this generates, or what comes out of this, then is those room data sheets where they go room by room of operational spaces, and essentially show you. Uh, what goes in the room in terms of furniture, what we're contemplating, uh, furniture, files, uh, library, libraries, uh, you know, those pieces of equipment, and the kinds of finishes that we're looking for, technology, uh, if there are any special requirements, those should be reflected in those room data sheets. Um, and that serves as a guide for uh, the architect to put these things together, that and this bubble diagram, which, uh, where the things are grouped uh, in a similar fashion to what we just went through here. Uh, again, the, ye the yellow is public, uh, the orange uh, has to do with uh, communications and IT, uh, green is administration, uh, the dark blue is detectives and goes into patrol, the lighter blue is support, and the purple is for, that's your hotel. 
And the, the, yes. The, the room data sheets that we shared are examples of room data sheets. We yeah, they're gone generic. Through in the details of, of getting, you know, going through that process, yeah, it's still early. But basically, but the, the, the final product different. will have similar size, right. the layout may be a little different, but... Finishes may be different, who knows. Yeah. What we have found is they, these kinds of support documents make it easy for people to understand uh, why certain rooms are the size they are, and, and of course that leads into why the building is the size it is. Um, it's a pretty transparent way of doing it, and it has always helped us in, in, in these towns that are here, you know, with, uh, educating the public into why the station is the size uh, it is, why it needs to be that way. We have very often, you know, we'll put up a project website, costs $20 a month or something like that, I think. Uh, put all the documents, once they're approved by the building committee, just upload them there and invite people to come and look at them and <coughs> you can uh, have a thing there for questions. If someone has a question, they can put a, a question and then it, it's whoever's running the website will can send that question to the chief or to the architect or whoever and then you put up the answers. So by the time you're actually asking people to vote, you've got just about all the questions they can ask answered online, available to everyone. So I would recommend you consider doing that. I don't know if you've had any discussions about it. They, they have one now. Uh, oh, okay. We, yeah, we have one now, and then we just appointed um, with a stipend um, somebody in our office that will be the webmaster. Um, he's going to create a separate page for the police station subcommittee um, so people can, like you said, go on, ask questions. He's going to put all the minutes and um, all of the videos, because they're on YouTube, so he's going to have one link, and he's going to link them all on. Great. That's great. We could put material like this, too, if the committee mm -hmm. you know, wants that to get that perfect. out there. Yeah. yeah, once it's approved yeah. and ready for public. Yeah. Mike, how many police stations have you programmed over how many years? Personally? Yeah. 40? 50? I'm not sure. And, and how much has policing changed over those years? How much has what? Policing changed. Well, it's evolved a lot. Yeah. Or I should say evolved, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there, there seems to be more, there are more and more things added to the mission of most police departments. Even when I go back, uh, and I do go back and say what, what worked, what didn't work. And uh, I hear a lot that, well, I wish we could have anticipated this, this new thing that we're doing. So we try and build flexibility into the spaces. Like I was talking about that second uh, interrogation room. Um, I think it's a good investment of 100 square feet uh, because in the future it will be needed. It's, uh, the, the biggest th things that I see are um, technology, growth of technology. It's just, it's, we, we go to IACP every year and look at what is, you know, the newest and what we've seen in a few years, so, or you know, several years, so we know that departments are, are incorporating that into what they're doing. Uh, five, six years ago, it was drones. And now everyone has a drone. Uh, so we, we keep abreast of those kinds of things. But I've also seen uh, more and more the mission of police departments being almost a social agency especially in larger communities, um, more community policing. Um, you know, that's becoming more and more important, the community uh, aspect, uh, connection with the community. So um, I've seen a lot of changes. They seem to be getting more space hungry rather than less, uh, but with good flexibility, you can, you can make do. Just as, I mean, your department has been I kind of believe that the day they moved in there, they didn't really fit there. No. Uh, Just so they've, they've, they have a culture of, uh, this is what we got, let's make it work. I mean, it real, uh, it's and, and thank God they have made it work, because I, I, I get nervous when I go into places like that. It just looked to me like, oh, so many things can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> So, so the, pro the process you're using right now is with the room data sheets is someone may look at this and say that 
you know, why do we need to think about this closet or this waiting area? Each one of those square feet is important for the entire process so the designers can then put that all together and, you know, develop what your footprint's going to be, whether it's one floor or two. Uh, usually what we see at this stage is some sort of buy-in from the committee. We can't get you to buy in 100 percent, but we like to know if we're going down the right track or not. Um, the, the bulk size of the facility as compared to the existing is rather uh, staggering. But it just it doesn't show you how uh, opulent the new facility is. It shows you how uh, efficient, efficient, inefficient yeah. the other facility yeah. was. So we're, we, in order for the designers to move to the next stage, we need to sort of give them some, yeah, we think you're on the right track. Uh, or, you know, know what, you're, we're not going any, any, any larger than 10,000 square feet and make it work uh, type of uh, discussion from, from my perspective. I've seen a lot of programming done by uh, Michael and KBA, and uh, this type of information is extremely valuable. <coughs> it, it lends, it justifies uh, the size of the facility. But to get to the next step and put all the pieces together and work with the site, you need, you need to kind of get an idea from the committee and the community uh, whether or not you think we're going on the right track. Well, everybody's looking at me. No, <laughs> well, you're at the end of the I'm sorry. Yeah, that's I'll go why. Like this. <laughs> um, no, I feel like we are going down the right path. Like I said before, and like you guys alluded to, we can upload all this information. The one thing we want to make sure that we do is we want to make sure that the community knows what we're doing every step along the way, and that at the end of this, we're not like, oh my God, we're building a police station, and no one knows about it. So um, I also think that, you know, this really does. I mean, we need. To, we also need to um, take a video of the current police station and put that on. Oh yeah, that would be really good. Yeah, so people know. You know, this is why we're doing this. Um, I mean, can I suggest a scene in there? You need a stop motion camera of, of, of that room and what goes on in there. Like, What's like every wrong 15 with this minutes, picture? You know, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. That's all in the same room, folks. Get some good. We did that. Before. Yeah, it, it's really it's important to. Yeah. Um, I mean, everything that, you know, I guess there's been some talk about, and, and I think Lakeville did it with them, like a one-stop fits all, but I think our police department is different than Swansea, is different than Lakeville, and I think that, you know, it, it doesn't always, one-stop doesn't, one-stop shopping doesn't fit all, and, um, you know, I, I think that you've captured exactly between you know, the police officers, the chief, the lieutenant, the sergeants, captured everything that we need and everything that this community really should have at their fingertips. Um, I think the next thing that we need to do is, like you said, um, is, you know, hone in on exactly what what direction we want to go through with, with the site. I mean, right now, you know, personally, the two-story building I mean, if you're talking height restrictions already and and price um, that is too high, I don't. I'm not sure that that's the way to go. Um, I, but I also, I'm a little. I'm not. I'm a little leery of thinking outside the box too much. Um, and is, you know, you need to sell me a little bit more on <coughs> on the attic one. You know what I mean? Like. It's not been done before. Is it going to work? I mean, it, it's unique, and I like that aspect of it. But um, is there anything that we're not seeing that might not be that we're not thinking of that might is not be feasible to the project? I think so. You know, you're talking about putting a lot of the equipment on the top. Is that going to interfere sound-wise with what's below and things like that? So I, I just I want to think a little bit more about that. Anybody else can talk. I, I, Go ahead, I would just like to add to that. I think the, there are those are things you need to think about in terms of what are you putting upstairs that's creating noise for downstairs. So uh, you know, it's very easy to a solution that we've come up with before is if you are putting a training room upstairs, you put it over the detention area. So you're not bothering someone who's working. There, <laughs> there are, I mean, so there are, there is some logic to to that, uh, and I would agree with you. I think what needs to happen, and I know, speaking for someone else, because I'm not the one that's going to do it, 
um, you need to now take a look at how you could you would lay out each one of those other two options if you if you're discarding the two story. And frankly, I don't, I'm not sure. I think the two story is going to create too much dark area, and it's not going to really work to support <coughs> all the spaces that go in the building. Whereas option one and option three have a chance of doing that. I mean, they will be able to do that. So you need to see now a little, you need to see some conceptual ideas, and then you'll be able to determine, yeah, this does work for us, or, you know, we don't want to do that. That's yeah. the next step. You know, I, I don't think that we should shortcut the project at all. I mean, if we need 16,000 square feet, we should go with that, because we don't want the same things to happen that happened in 78 or whenever it was. The other thing, too, is, as much as you try to get the community on board with this, you're going to miss a lot of people you know, because they don't go on, they're not interested in what's going on in town, and then when it comes time, they're going to be, oh, you're building a police station. You know how it works. We go through this all the time. Um, you got to do the best you can to get it out in front of in front of everybody and you know I mean certainly the police department has their own Facebook page and that's the only way you're going to be able to yeah. do it but I don't think we should shortcut anything I think we should go for what we need but we can't have it look like the Taj Mahal either because no. that is going to be a, a bad omen. Right. So, some people will call it the Taj Mahal anyway. <laughs> well you know what I'm talking about. They don't want to look it like it. <laughs> they, they it has to look like what belongs in our sure. community. To that question, do we stay with the 70 seats or do we go to the 50 we were just discussing for the conference room? I mean, the 50 would be a happy compromise between the 30, as you suggested, and the 70 seat training slash meeting conference room. Should we put the 50 seat into the plan or should we stay with the 70 seat that you would? Can I make a recommendation to that? Uh, mm -hmm. It's what Andy brought up earlier. If we can ask the designers to, when they're doing their layouts, uh, position that meeting room so that it, it could be expanded. Mm -hmm. um, so as we're going through this design, if we decide we want to increase it, we're not changing the whole design. We're just moving a wall out. Um, design that flexibility into it now so that decision doesn't have to be made now. Right. One feature we did see that was nice in Swans, I think it was, is the meeting room was on an exterior wall that had an, a separate entrance and exit that could be unlocked from inside so when they're doing business with the public you didn't have people going through the police station for no, for you foyer and stuff they would have a separate access but it would be lockable from the inside so when that wasn't the case it'd be locked off and nobody could gain access to it. I think uh, that would be a big selling point for going from 70 because I think the community realizes that you know there's not many places to meet I mean most of our meetings are held down here. There's mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. wrong with it. holding it in well, the, the rest of our boards meet at the town hall in the hallway. I know. That's or another the, big issue. I mean, or the, or the, or the uh, mm -hmm. school. But I think the comparison shot, uh, sheet with other towns of similar sizes and the square footage and so forth, that's important for the public to see. That will be important to sell it because in comparison, we're not exceeding, we're not going way above. And I think those are things, I think, once we have more plans and so forth, make use of some of the large gatherings. You know, not everyone goes, and a lot of older folks aren't going to be on the internet and they're not going to be looking. So we've got to have some visual things in town hall, um, you know, at different festivals and so forth, having a, maybe a table there, of updates. Once we're at that point, uh, that will get different people to get them on board. I do, uh, I do think that we need to leave it at 50 and do it as an ad alternate because once we know what the square footage, total square footage is and what the cost is going to be in relation to what site and what plan we develop, then I think it's easy for us to say, look, we have the extra money, let's, let's go forward with that. I think that if we do 50 and we keep the tables out of there, um, we do have room for 70. I think that that's our goal is to make sure that we have room for 70. Um, but I think that we can do it as an ad alternate. I think that's the smartest way to so go. So have the base as as 50. As 50. But I think that that's I think that this, that's this committee's first, um, you know, want is that we want to go up to that to 70.
to store the tables out of the way. In an adequate room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you store it out of the way, then the area is going to be able to be a little bit smaller, right. especially for like a meeting instead yeah. of a training. Yeah, yeah. you probably just have the tables set up right. for the selectmen at the front, and right. the rest would be yeah. 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 But we want to be able to fit 70 mm -hmm. people in seat. there. Seat 70, right? Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Right. But not train seven. Not train seven. Not tabled seven. Not right. for training, but for. Okay. Right. Do I have a motion on the floor? I'll make that motion. Second. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Paul. Can, can I suggest one one other thing? You know, you're you're talking about the people who don't who don't go on the internet and don't don't know about this. We have found that if you start writing the letters to the editor, people tend to read that. And so it, it sort of creates a dialogue. Um, and there's nothing, you don't really have to have a very organized campaign, you know, just sort of, wow, we're finally talking about, you know, a new police station, I'm excited, the town really needs this, or, you know, whatever. Start that and start sending them on a regular basis. That would be good. It like does. You don't get much coverage it, that you would wait for it, it to get it some does, coverage. It does affect the overall, you know, some, some towns, I can remember when you know, doing that in the past, by the time you came to the vote, people were saying, didn't we pass this already? Well, I've been reading about it forever. <laughs> we have a fall town meeting coming up, so I want to make sure that we have like um, something available for them so we can start you know, mm -hmm. making sure that people know what's going on. I think between your Facebook page, the town, um, Free Town's uh, Facebook page, there's a lot of people that read that stuff. Um, so, or something. I know yeah. You, so should, anyway. you should document your deficits too, so they can see why we're looking at replacing a police station that's currently standing. You know, some well, of the issues that we, we could have, integrate a, the, the video, you know, and, and some stills on that. That'd be perfect. Okay, so when's the yeah. town meeting? Has um, it been set? It has to be set, but it's October. usually in October. October. Yeah, like the third week in October, second or third week in October. Yeah, they had like a PowerPoint going of the conditions as they are mm -hmm. and have that agreement like, for you. Okay. Is it too premature to. People don't know. I mean, I really didn't know. I didn't really know. Thank goodness I didn't have to go there much, but uh, I mean, I really didn't know until I had the tour what, what was really. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll set that up, and we'll make sure that that gets done. Okay. I'm wondering if it's too premature to, uh, you, you, you voted to support the 50, uh, 50 uh, meeting room with 70 seats. Um, I, I think it would be appropriate, if we don't have any questions, maybe we uh, approve the, the draft space needs assessment so the designers have, have some, some comfort level that you're, that you're happy with. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. I just ask one question. If we have some, if we have some questions about some of these items, should we ask them now, or should we wait until we see more of a uh, a plan? You can ask them now. We're, we're, I mean, I don't have a whole lot. I'm just one of, one of the ones, and it's only 30 to 50 square feet, guys. But yeah. what I'm just wondering is, you have the, um, the breathalyzer room and the um, hard, um, well, the, the, the holding cell beach as it's like pastor room, pastor yeah. room. Could you use the same room for both? What we normally do is rather than have a separate room for breathalyzer, we'll incorporate it into the processing space uh -huh. and probably save a few square feet. Uh -huh. um, so it won't go into that holding area. You don't want no. anything in that holding area. Yeah, okay. And these are very expensive pieces of machinery, they have to be protected. So 
a, an officer needs to accompany someone to do it, and as I say, they sit down for 20 minutes uh, between right. takes. So yeah, it won't be a separate space. It'll probably be incorporated in the final design into the processing space. So the circulation area from the processing space covers the circulation area needed for that. I'd say that's a typical thing that we'll, we would try and do. All right. Um, and the, my only other, we have the conference room. And thinking of the possibility of growing or needing space, can we get the conference room so that it could have the ability to be divided into two offices if we needed? Do you think that that's something that could be workable? You, that you can do that from a design standpoint. However, uh, very often what happens in the conference room in the administrative area is very private. Mm -hmm. uh, you would not, you know, you don't want that in the public sphere no. at all. No. So, um, and again, it, it, it very often, I mean, if you have to talk to a couple of officers about what they didn't do right, uh -huh. you know, you do that in the privacy of a, right. you know, this kind of a conference room. You don't want to be going anywhere near the public area. So right. it makes that a little difficult to do. In theory, it works, but okay. not in reality. Okay. I, what I meant was to divide if in the future you had to quickly uh, expand the building within itself, would, would, could we design something so that the conference room is then divided into, say, two office spaces? But like a movable partition? Right, a movable partition or the ability to build a, uh, at least wall? a semi-permanent. Yeah, you could add a wall. That's a, that's a, yeah. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. So the conference room would have to be configured so that right. It, once you divided it, it could be accessed from a quarter on both sides. Right. So we'd have to plan for that. Yeah. yeah. And, I yeah. think that like, very good. In, in other words, you put it lengthwise along its right. circulation. That's yeah. that was my thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lengthwise. That, that could be more challenging. Two doors, the administration. It's actually a, it's a perfect office space. Yeah, I think it's, you know, because I know. Yeah. That we <laughs> I, was one, I was a police officer who went into that, that building originally. Oh. But see, you have to understand, yeah. we were in a office that was probably 10 by 10. It is now used as the assessor's map room. That's how small it was. <laughs> and then on two offices down was the communication center. So you could understand that. Yeah. When we were into a 3,000 square foot building, it was big. That was big. <laughs> yes. Okay. Any other questions? I, I think that's for now. I think there'll be more. Yeah, the team yeah. uh, the yeah. team's open for questions yeah. at any yeah. time, so yeah. we're we're not done. That's for oh, sure. Yeah. But I think I, if I could make a recommendation to approve the draft assessment as presented uh, with a 50 table meeting room that will allow for 70 people seated. I'll make that as a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Do you want us to hone in on that? Um, on any of the two, do you want to look at pros and cons for each? Are you going to come up with a cost assessment for all three? Is there anything that the committee likes and doesn't like from any of those? I'd like to see a cost assessment for the three, mm -hmm. okay. including retaining, wall, retaining walls, site, site work, because retaining walls can get expensive too. Is that doable? <laughs> okay. I think we could do some, some bulk uh, evaluations. Uh, an elevator retaining wall. Chief, we need to talk about operations um, and how comfortable you are splitting your operations between two floors. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm uncomfortable about, about two floors and splitting operations. Um, obviously, if everything was on one floor, that's the easiest way to go. Um, I did note, and you know, I mentioned this before in Swansea. Um, they have two floors, and um, the line officers end up having to run down sets of stair a stairwell to uh, egress the building to their vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, not uncommon, you know, officers get a little excited, they're running out to a hot call or whatever. Uh, that's just not a good thing, you know. Um, and then if one floor needs to be filled with certain elements, how do you split up line functions, you know, to be... They're not going to be integrated well, you know. Especially with your size department, 
two floors is it just fragments things. So it's just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So ideally, concept one or concept three could work because concept three was more bonus room uh, type space on the attic. In my opinion, yes, those would be the options. Yeah. I initially went up with favor. Concept one. Concept one or three. Yeah. But, you know, if I may not be seeing something that others. Well, on concept three as it is, you wouldn't have a movement between the two floors. And you not have not an operation. Well, not operation. Not operation. Yeah. Right. All the operations are on access. the lower level. Yes. Right. Yeah. So everyone's exiting their vehicle, you know, going out, out of the building on, right. on, at grade. Right. Yeah. So there's no, every, no down flight of stairs. Anything on in the attic would be something where you would move there for a purpose, right. such as extra storage for storage records. Storage records. Yeah. There's a lot of things that you could get out of that first floor up right. into right. the attic that gives you more right. space, you know, so your IT room, your mechanical space, yeah. you know. I would not discard the possibility of having locker rooms and, and exercise room up there if in, in, in number three. Mm -hmm. That was significantly cut down on the floor plate. Uh, if that actually the grades work that way, there could be a savings. And it will reduce the amount of, let's say, the blind wall in the actual building is, is pretty minimalized. The yeah. other thing is, if you've got mm -hmm. large pieces of equipment, like the 911 tower, et cetera, the work crews that come in aren't going up and down stairs or you're negotiating mm -hmm. hallways, banging hallway walls, et cetera. They can be provided with access directly from outside. Exactly. And they wouldn't right. be... The Mechanical rooms up. could go up yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Electric rooms. Yeah. Yeah. They could all go above the holding areas, yeah. uh, which could have which to is in that general area. Yeah. Like the, you have what the holding area. Electrical is. doesn't usually yeah. work out. Yeah. That mechanical does. Mechanical. Yeah. Would you need a mechanical device with the attic, unless? If you do public access. To the door. Only if you do public access. If it's not public access, you don't need. Right. Yeah. You know, so when you said mechanical, what, what, I mean, no. An elevator? Uh, elevator. We need an oh, elevator. no, if you, do, if you have no public function mm -hmm. uh, and no operations up there, mm -hmm. no. Right. You would do a, a stairway. single stair. Yeah, a stairway. Yeah. stairway. Mm -hmm. Single stairway. Yeah. So this, you is, don't this is actually pretty interesting because you can concentrate on your the single floor plate. And then if you, you know, I didn't realize it before, but you've got most of your site layout is exactly the same. Yeah. But what you've done is just change your retaining walls a little bit and took advantage of that second floor like you would take advantage of a basement. Right. Uh, so we're not spending a lot of time spinning our wheels with several different options. It's one option with a uh, with uh, you know a way to use that Some bonus between rotation. one and three. Two would take a little bit of work because it's yeah. it's, right. it's, it's a it's, yeah, it's, it's a complete different. I have a hard time seeing yeah, I have a hard time with this two floor model too. So I don't but those two, yeah, we yeah. could easily develop the concepts a little bit more and then come back and maybe even start throwing a little mm. some budgets to it. So we want to get build belts for one and two? One and three. Yeah, maybe we can get two off the table. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's have a motion on that. I'll make a motion to get rid of two. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Two's gone. One, one and three. Right. That was a great way to present that, though. When you think about it, because people are always going to wonder. So let's get it on the table and really understand whether it works or not. Well, I mean, the we site tells you a lot here. Yeah. You got to pay attention to it from the beginning. Yeah. And that has to be part we of the program. All about yeah. Two two levels, right? Yeah. I mean, right. we always wanted a basement and a and two levels, just but until we see, yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't work. All right. Anything else? Uh, like we do have to talk about some site uh, additional yep. site engineering, but I wanted to just stay on architecture for a minute. Uh, what do you can you describe what your next steps would be? Um, our next step would be working with these two schemes, and um, you know a, a very sketchy floor plan. You know a little more than what you're seeing in the diagram here. But not getting hung up on particulars, just how the spaces relate to each other. Right. You know, we're not going to be talking about door swings and let's start taking some windows. shape, some real form mm -hmm. to the building itself. The yes. Yeah. yeah. And study the site. Continue to study the site. 
we stayed on our um, our two week meeting schedule. Could we look at uh, a early schematic floor plan of two weeks from now? Yeah, just staying on that topic for one second. Um, what I did here is I took this is what the program is Castle Blues gave me here, and then I change it around a little bit with the thinking of the site, such as what maybe could go in the blind spot, such as uh, uh, locker rooms and showers. So it, it could, it does have some impact on the floor plan, you know, how the site changes. And that's what I've started to do here. Um, the second floor, I just took a stab at some division without any input just to get some topics going, which is irrelevant now. But um, you can see this is basically the one that appears on the sheet in front of you, this scheme here on the one story. Whereas this one here, I pulled the staff support areas down into here because the locker rooms don't need windows and, and whatnot. That would be that area that gets backed into the dirt, just that one corner. But if you chose to put those areas on the second level and reduce the footprint, to make things easier for you on the site, you may have a smaller, an even smaller um, area that needs to be dark for, you know, the retaining wall. Exactly. I mean, maybe you can even put your your holding in that area there if you change around some of your your access to your sally port. Well, I, I think that the tension really wants to stay out here and okay. lock it down. It has to be right adjacent to the sally port, and you, you want to drive through the sally port. Yeah, yeah. drive through. That's right. Yeah, but you don't need it to, to stick out quite that much. No, I mean, no. It, it, it could, it could even do what it. you just suggested. Yeah. You right. took the bright, the bright, bright right flue in. out and slid push the, the uh, uh, you know, push yeah, push the, the darker blue over and slide that bar across. The, you might be able to, you might be into some serious reduction of area on that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, th this is a very important entry here. I think the cruises belong here. And that's going to be a very important entry point for the in and out. What's to keep the cruiser from being on the right-hand side rather than in the back? Flipping it. Uh, over here? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, but you I have to just move the program that way. Yeah, it, it, we move the program that way. Um, it would be, you know, visible from the street, which I guess isn't bad. And well, I like... You can, if you turn the, uh, the, planet, the uh, meeting room, Turn it to block and buy you some mm -hmm. protected area. You can do that. Well, which you know, this yeah. is yeah. this is in house stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's internal. <laughs> that's <laughs> like that. We're we'll worrying about. Just want, just want to enjoy the hot dog. <laughs> but what we're talking about is the next step. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's going to so go floor plans deeper. next and try to fit it in. Yeah. Great job, guys. Thank you yeah. so much. I think we accomplished a lot in a very short period of time. So is that something we could, you know, schedule a next meeting for at this point? Yeah, I think so. You, which, you know, a lot of it's going to fall into you, so uh, a couple of weeks, is that enough time? Yeah, uh, you know, a, it's going to be a is lot of adjacencies and basic site concepts, concepts for that meeting, yeah. so I can do that relatively quickly. Because it's going to be a, a lot, it's, a, a, it's going to be a lot more of discussion yeah. uh, based on yeah. what I show you rather than Here's a refined plan. What do you think? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's more just yeah. perfect. So two weeks. Yeah, I just wanted to for a building committee meeting. Yeah, um, if, if you guys are comfortable with that, or I, I, I am. Do you so. want to have a separate project meeting in between to bounce anything off the chief? Or? Um, we you don't have to decide now, but you know we can keep that open and uh, if if, uh, if yeah, let's works. play that by ear. Okay. So, um, we also could maybe just do something by email also. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. The 27th at 5.30? Um, Mary is, Mary can't do the Thursday this time around because she's already missed two historical society meetings. Um, can anybody? On the 10th we have you. Oh, you have one on the 10th? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we can do the 27th. All right. Can everybody do the 27th? July 27th. We have a pack. Did you look at our schedule? No. I know we're we're crazy. We could give it a little more time too. I mean, it, they're going to keep going either way and do the you know the yeah, three weeks, we'll do the third. Yeah, we'll third. Are we doing the twenty seventh? I'm going the third to the tenth. Okay, I believe we're doing twenty fourth and twenty seventh. Thank you, so.
or are we doing the 20th and 24th? What did you say to Allie? All right, we'll see you next year. So 20. <laughs> <laughs> I think the 27th. I thought, yeah, it sounds like 27th. 27th, 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 what day is that? That's Thursday. A Thursday. 27th of July? Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to sleep in this room. 5.30. We're going to stick with the 5.30? Yeah. Air conditioner work. Yeah, I told her not to bother tonight. Um, sorry, but I will. I just meant for the sleeping. It's the new, it's, it's the new system, and I don't, I don't have the... Um, yeah. Yeah, so I told them not to worry about it. Sorry, I'll have it ready for the next one. Okay. Great, so 5.30 on the 7th. 27th, yeah, sorry. Yeah. All right. So we've had a lot of communications with regards to the site uh, information and the survey work that uh, Kelly Engineering has performed. And we've had some great conversations going back and forth over the last week or so and Kelly will be providing some more information in some areas, uh, but there is some additional information that the engineers are looking for that Kelly believes is above and beyond their original scope of service. And I did get a, uh, a, uh, an update from Steve Horsfall at uh, Kelly Engineering just before we left for this meeting. Basically, the original contract with Kelly was for $20,000, and they're, then they were authorized to proceed with the wetlands flagging above and beyond that. And I, I need some time to go through this and read their agreement again. But it looks to me as if, uh, as of this time, they've billed for about 16,004, leaving a balance of 3,600. Uh, they have uh, the 3,600 was meant to. Um, to, for reimbursables or if there was going to be a balance to go towards the wetlands delineation and flagging and they spent 5400 on the wetlands delineation and flagging which means that they've gone over the uh, the twenty thousand dollar mark um, by about uh, you know eighteen hundred dollars so uh, there's some adjustment that's going to need to take place there above and beyond that we're, we're looking for some additional elevations and points along the center lines of both, uh, both roads so that all of the drainage can be designed uh, properly. Uh, the information that we've been provided is, is, uh, is, is adequate, uh, but there's more information that we need. We also need the, the well fields located uh, and a few other things. Um, we've got some great definition um, from uh, Compass's uh, civil engineer. Uh, and. He's uh, very detailed in what he's looking for. Kelly has reviewed that, and they've come back to us and said that they're, some of that uh, work that, they're, that, uh, that Garcia Galesca de Souza is looking for, uh, Kelly uh, is covering under their contract, but they're looking for an extra $7,500 to do uh, some more engineering and provide some more um, survey work on site. I think it's, uh, it would be a very wise investment because there's nothing worse than uh, going into bidding with an inadequate set of, I'm not saying we have inadequ inadequate information, but we need more information because we want the contractors, we want to minimize uh, elevation issues and change orders. So it would be our recommendation that, I don't know if the committee can approve it or not, but that somehow or another we allow Kelly to advance uh, this additional work. And the proposal that, I haven't gotten a proposal, it's just an email, but he's identifying um, $7,500. So what you'd be looking at is the $7,500 plus the extra $1,800 that they went over in the first phase. If I did my math correctly. Are those hard numbers or he's still looking at that? No, nope, those are hard numbers. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, I understand what needs to be done, and I know that, uh, you know, we have a, a max of 750 Thousand, which is for you, you, and part of that was for uh, Kelly Engineering. So. Well, that covers us. I don't know about those. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <Yeah. laughs> well, it's time for us to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, and remember, this is a uh, this is um, a phase project. So again, um, what's not covered here will be part of the debt exclusion that we go forward with. So, what's what's the committee's Pleasure. Where do we shake out financially? 
to, to, to date on our 750? Well, I knew that we had $4,000 left. I didn't get the last um, invoice from Kelly, so I was I didn't know about the minus 1800 Oh, you mean you had 4000 left in, yeah. in mm -hmm. his budget? Yeah. yeah. But you were, you were asking overall, overall project. Yeah. To this point, we have the 750 We have engineering on board. We have design on board. We have OPM on board. What do we have left out of that 750 I'm not exactly sure, to be honest with you, but I can give you an assessment on that uh, first thing tomorrow morning. Yeah. I didn't go through and, uh, you know. I was going to have that ready for the committee tonight because I knew that that was going to come up. Yeah. But I thought we were fine with Kelly. I didn't know that we were. Right. That That's the only reason it's, it's yeah. current at this point. Right. I know we're under the 750. I don't know where. Yeah, we're, we're under the 750 because they're phased and they are too. Right. Yeah, our services end at the end of bid. Mm -hmm. so yep. At, at this point. Right. right. I, 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 I can pretty much say with certainty you have you have the money. For we the do have the money. The yeah. I'm sure it's 750 but I 7500 dollars we do, but I just want to know shake down where we are. How much extra do we have? I can get that to the committee through an email tomorrow. Mm -hmm. okay. Do they need their seven they ran from the 7500 now? Yes. Mm -hmm. What we'd like to do is we want to just keep the design team moving and engine site engineering is going to be one of our most critical items because what we're trying to do is keep the cost down. Uh, and so you know, getting this information, the well information, is going to be critical for that. Is that what they're requesting is with the well information? That's one of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah we need to know. We've done compactions. Well we've done all those things. Well, we haven't done any geotechnical. No, no geotechnical no, at all. This is just you know, locating them so we kind of know where they are. Yeah, yeah geotechnical will come after. Did you go to the building department, too? And I know you were asking... Um, some questions from the building department as far as the wells and things like that. Did you go and ask them? Okay. To, to them yet. So Kelly would be handling uh, that research with, uh, you know, for the wells because we need them identified on the drawing with some accuracy. Right. The well at the baseball field is more than 200 feet from yeah. Memorial. Yeah. Pretty much everything's going to be more than 100 feet. Question. Um, I know that well. Can you approve it contingent yeah, upon the, the committee could take a vote yeah. based on the email that you know was sent around tomorrow right. with a with a fund stand. All right, so move. Second. All in favor. Aye. So at least I'll send you a summary in the morning. Okay. okay. I Good. saw a part of it, but I didn't part of his answers. So yeah. Okay, we'll talk. It's a bit convoluted. I've yeah. got it. I, I just got it printed off before on the on the way out the door. So okay. Uh, yeah. All right, are we done? Does, does this building share so well with the police station? Yeah. This, building. this building. So we're not going to be Second. abandoning that well if you built a new building because you're still going to need it for this day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure we have a proper distance from this well. Right. And I think they yeah, uh, you want actually only 100, 100 feet, right? Nate asked for that as well. Yeah. 200 foot yeah. commercial. I know the school well, the will, corner, corner, the public corner. well will yeah. be 200. I don't know what they would consider this one. Well, it's either 100 well, or 200. <laughs> yeah, behind no, I, that white shed up in yeah. the corner there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's almost like over here. Yeah, I think Nate was very specific in terms of the things that he was looking for, and this well was one of them. Baseball field as well as the school. The baseball field is fine. Yeah, the baseball field and the... Highway department too, right? Didn't he say something about the highway that, department? Where's Bob's well? That way. Do you know? What's that? Do you know what Bob's well is that way? No, but I thought that one just uh, is definitely two hundred. Uh, just by yes, locate the well at the DPW. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. 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 Right. That's the one's gonna be there. It's gonna be interesting. <laughs> Well, yeah, the yeah, that's going to be it's one. near the storage yeah. pool tank, so it's yeah, located it's right the ground. <laughs> 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 and then we don't really want to know anything the about it. The Joe Simmons <laughs> forget to tell us about it. Can we just tie our well in with that well? <laughs> yeah. I knew that you never well. I did have one other question. Sure. Uh, it was regarding the culvert that crosses Chase. I'll talk, I just saw that today. Um, I'll ask him tomorrow. To to clear that out? Yeah, on both okay. sides. Yep. Um, and then uh, the engineers can get down there with accuracy. Yeah. He likes Carlton better, so I may have Carlton ask him. <laughs> <laughs> well, me too. That would be fine. <laughs> Thank you. Well, some of the, some of the stuff that Nate was uh, looking for, I think Steve had confirmed some of it was covered within his scope. That's correct. He just yeah. hasn't just done, hadn't it, yeah, done yeah. it yet. Like so. the culvert, because it was, it was couldn't access. You couldn't get there.
Yeah, will you look that over and just make sure? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. I don't want to double pay something. That we've no, already right. Paid for. We don't want you to worry. Yeah. Right. All right. Michael, Any questions? Concerns? Yeah. Comments? Yeah. Just my comment yeah. is, you guys, thank yeah. you so thank much. You. I mean, all of you, the four of you, the five of you. Thank you. All right. Mike put off his surgery to be here today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's yeah, dedicated. It's good. Good. We appreciate the time that the chief has taken also to meet with us multiple times. I think you can tell that we're all eager to get this done. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess so. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.